to the TV Burp Review of the Year. Spaghetti Bolognese Overdose on Casualty. I know her. Okay, Tash, let's get a book in another line that seems to work and start on the project album in you. Man describes his own teeth on megastructures. And we'll have flexible zones between them, flexible joints between them, and there's quite a large gap between each of those sections. <laughs> And Charlie Slater shocked by his own beer gut on EastEnders. Hmm, what's that? <laughs> I should say, if you haven't got time to watch the whole show, I prepared this little package which pretty much sums up the year on TV. Get out! No! <laughs> 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 That was pretty much, <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> of course, it was Olympic year and we were taken behind the scenes to meet British Olympic diving hopeful 14-year-old Tom Daly. It's finally worth it because I'm going to be an Olympian. This is how happy I am. I'm as happy as... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't win a medal. Oh, I can give you a sneak preview of the opening ceremony Boris Johnson's got planned for the London Olympics. Now, obviously, we haven't got the resources they've got in Beijing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> this was Trini and Susanna's great British body. The idea was to, uh... Well, I'm not sure exactly what the idea was, but it involved people taking their clothes off on TV. And if that isn't a ratings winner, I don't know what is. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> it, oh, really? Oh, I am surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the idea... <laughs> ..was to get as many people as they could naked on the side of a hill to, um... Well, I'm sure, as I say, they had their reasons. <laughs> At least the people who took part got something out of it. But no, um, it was really good. Um... I'm glad I took part in it all. I'm really proud of myself. I actually feel as if I've done something important. That's a shame, cos you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to show you this, uh, this pink bunting that uh, I've organised for the producers of Birthday Party later. Yeah, the pink bunting. Oh, there seems to be a piece of the bunting uh, missing there. I don't know what's happened to that piece of pink bunting. Sarah is a typical large size case. She's asking for help because a big bum is making her give up on everything else. Yeah, yeah well, oh, 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 I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> oh, 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 a little bit of vanish on it, be fine. Now, this was Trini and Susanna's other show, Undress the Nation. The idea was to get people to feel at ease with their bodies. Oh, the clever ways in which they got you to love yourself. Love it or loathe it. Your bum is your bum. And it's really important that women say, I am me, I love me, and I love my bum. The thing is, I love my bum and I love me, but I love me a little bit more than I love my bum, and <laughs> my bum is jealous of me. Which <laughs> brings us to our fabulous bum of the year. Fabulous bum of the year. It's an extra. I've never seen a bum like that before. That's fabulous. <laughs> Ray Mears was back in his new show. Ray Mears goes walkabout. Walkabout? Oh, I see. He's walking about. Is he? Must be tiring. All that walking about. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about the term walkabout is that you can use it to describe almost any sort of journey. <laughs> He's walking about in a car. <laughs> this time Ray is in Australia and he's met some lovely local people who have a particular way of communicating with their ancestors. The land here on Prince of Wales is sacred to the Kaurareg people. It's where they've lived for thousands of years. Before we're allowed onto the island, Enid calls to her ancestors for their guidance and permission to be here. Oh! Oh! I'm coming, Enid! <laughs> what you got?
got to drink. Wait, man, you need that one, Lager. <laughs> lager. <laughs> Lovely. I hope it's my favourite. Is it calling? Yes, sir. <laughs> There's no need for bad language. <laughs> but, but there he is, poor Ray, long periods on his own in the bush. Naturally, his mind turns to other things. Brand new billy cam. I think it's about time it lost its virginity. <laughs> but, uh, Ray, I, I think maybe he's been out there too long on his own, but... Um, <laughs> I was out there myself, as a matter of fact. Yes, and of course, there's no toilet paper. Oh, no, no. You have to uh, make do with a leaf. There's real beauty here, but much of it is dangerous. Like this, called simply and accurately the giant stinging tree. The rainforest has got a whole host of things you've got to be a bit careful of in it, and this is a real classic. This, this tree with these big heart-shaped leaves is one you wouldn't use for toilet paper. <laughs> I think that was a bit sore. Still, <laughs> it should only last a day or so. This will continue to sting, not just for a day or two days, but up to six months. <laughs> Can you get me that talcum powder? <laughs> the big one. Yeah, I was... I was over there, and it was interesting to see Ray getting ready to pitch his tent. Always clear the ground where you're going to put up your swag. Leaf litter can be a place where you find scorpions, ants that can bite. Oh, careful, Ray. I'm trying to put the tent up here. Have it out! Sting! Where was I? Yeah. It's all right, I gave him a dock leaf later on. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the Australian accent is a lovely one. I particularly like the way it goes up at the end of each sentence. I wonder whether this man on BBC Two's Jimmy Doherty's Farming Heroes might have a touch of Australian blood, because if you listen carefully, his voice goes up slightly at the end. Now we're turning them into a useful product that, well, as you can see, that wood there is, is going to produce electricity. <laughs> Slightly at the end there. In this series, Jimmy visited his farming heroes that someone had researched for him. One of whom <laughs> was Paul Kelly, a turkey farmer who had a real light touch with his flock. Yeah, and that's what's called the snood. You see, now that, that's tight at the moment. Ooh, ah, ah, oh, 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 stop doing that! Stop doing that! Mm, mm. Yeah, I've got a turkey down here. Uh, let's just have a little, have a little pull. <laughs> 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 I know that they're a bit tight for space in the Queen Vic, but I do resent Phil storing his champagne glasses on top of my telly. Phil? Got champagne here, please? Champagne? You're pushing the boat, aren't you? Yeah, well, me and Annie, we're buying a stall off Bill, aren't we? You kept that one quiet. Yeah. Give my jinx in. Yeah, so soon you won't be the only Mitchell entrepreneur in Wall Street, Bill. <laughs> Look after your own glasses. <laughs> I like to keep ornaments up there, like these two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Mm. Well, it was nice to see Stacy's mum. <laughs> Stacy's mum finally, <laughs> finally getting a bit of male attention. Oh, he was so handsome. She was so pretty, mm. just like you. Silly. <laughs> I'm not pretty. You are. You're very pretty. Well... <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Branning household, Lauren was off on a camping trip. Right. Oh. Is Lauren feeling better, then? Yeah, yeah, she couldn't get on that bus quick enough, oh. tell you. The, the idea of a week camping in Norfolk with a load of hormonal teenagers. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to embarrass me, are you? Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Abby. It's just Lauren's camping trip. I don't know if there's any spaces left at all. <laughs> it's amazing how Max's son, baby Oscar, looks so much like his dad. Is he still with you? Yeah. 
I was hoping he'd have gone. No, he's still here. Ah, oh, bless. <laughs> Poor Ronnie, she was most upset, and like a lot of us, when she cries, she likes to do it into her own special crying cushion to absorb the tears. Ronnie's crying cushion, yeah. I've got it here. There we are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> The whole Jack, Ronnie, Max, Tanya, Jack, Ronnie, Max love rectangle ploughed on. And poor Tanya, she was facing a real dilemma. Who to go with? Nude hurts. <laughs> but the big story this year was the death of Wellard. Aww. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> yes, Wellard, everyone's favourite TV doggy, is dead. But time is a wonderful healer, and before you know it, a new dog has arrived. And with a new animal on the square, it ruffled a few feathers. Go on, you two. Make yourselves at home, yeah? Right. Mm. Albert? Go on, boy. Go on. Come here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but which is better? Albert, <laughs> the dog, or Corky the parrot? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> 